What's up guys? Just got the new Eero Pro 7. I'm an unboxing, seeing, review, doing my full-on speed test range test with my following Wi-Fi 7 devices. I also have the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which is a Wi-Fi 7 device. However, this cannot go as fast as these two, and I've made a separate video comparing the phones to each other. So it has nothing to do with the Eero or any other router. It's really just a limitation on the iPhone as far as I can tell. So this is basically going to be the new mid-tier of the Eros, and it's designed to essentially, from my opinion, replace the Eero Pro 6E, which was the existing mid-tier. However, they did a very decent upgrade, and this kind of looks like a mini Eero Max 7, and I've reviewed the Max 7, and in fact, in a separate video, I will be comparing the various Eros to each other, and this is also the new Eero 7 right here. So this is a size comparison between both of these. Obviously this one stands like that, like the Aero Max 7 does. So that's kind of what it looks like. So shape wise, it's a little different where the Aero 7 is closer to the Aero Pro 60 and the Pro 6 before that. So another nice upgrade that they brought is that they have two five gigabit ports. And I love the fact that they have at least two of the same speed ports. So we also have the factory reset and it's powered via USB-C and they are auto sensing ports, which means no matter which one you connect your modem to, it will figure it out and know what to do with it. And both of these Eero Pro 7s are exactly the same, which means no matter which one you connect to your modem and set it up that way, that one will become your automatic main router and the secondary one will act as an access point no matter which one of these two you pick and in a separate video i will also do a setup guide to show you guys all the various ways you guys can connect this mesh system and on the bottom we have some extra vents right here and we have some more vents on the top and again it's really like a mini Eero max 7. So they have the USB-C power supplies. I also love the fact that it's USB-C. Now, Eero does recommend you use their power adapters and not just any USB-C adapter, just as a heads up. And then we have the 27 watt power supply right here. It is 100 to 240 volts in case you guys are wondering. And then we have a very nice braided category cable. It doesn't say what category it is. However, at this distance, these cables should be even, even a Cat5 cable at this distance should be able to get to 10 gig speeds, assuming you have the necessary hardware. So this cable should be able to get to the 5 gig speeds. And then we have another power right here. Let's get to the testing. So I set up the Eero Pro 7 as my main mesh system and I had zero issues setting up, no drops, nothing like that, nothing abnormal. Did all my speed test range tests, have all those numbers right here. And I also did a separate video where I actually tested the wireless backhaul. Note, I will go over some wireless backhaul numbers in this video, but in the other video, I actually connected my Mac Mini to the wireless backhaul node via Wi-Fi and also via Ethernet, because even though it's in wireless backhaul, you could still use the Ethernet ports, and in fact, it can actually go faster that way, assuming you have the capable hardware and your internet speeds are fast. So assuming everything's right, you can actually get some very, very fast speeds and my other video does show that. So I'll link that video down below. I'll also link the product links as well in case you guys are interested. So we'll start off with internet speed test because one of the things that I was wondering about really is that as you guys know when you're accessing the internet you are limited by your internet speeds which for me would be five gigabits per second upload and download and this just so happens to have the five gigabit port so i actually wanted to see if i can actually touch that five gigabits which i can with some of the routers that have the 10 gig port i usually do see that 5000 number with this one i got to around 4.8 or so on an ethernet connected device so not quite to that five gig number but very close to it. So looking at the wireless numbers, not quite as fast as Ethernet, but still got some genuinely fast numbers, especially on the download sections. We got 3.14 gigabits per second and almost 1.9 gigabits per second on the upload. However, to find the true performance of this mesh system, I do a local speed test server. So I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And then in the case of the secondary one, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. So this way I'm isolating the mesh system and I'm not relying on my ISP, my internet service provider, nor the public speed test server, which can actually vary at times, uh, depending on the time of the day you're running it and you know depending on how busy it is. So 
We could see overall drastic improvement, especially in the upload section, very, very fast. I was actually surprised that I actually got the upload speeds that I got, 3.85 being the uploads. The download, I was expecting it would go faster, but the upload, I was not expecting it to go this fast. So very, very solid numbers. Then we moved to wired backhaul and we pretty much got just about the same speeds on the other node and that's because we have two five gigabit ports so you're not actually losing any of those speeds which is fantastic. And then we get to the wireless backhaul. So wireless backhaul, not quite as fast but still got some very, very fast speeds and again, this is on a Wi-Fi connected device. If you actually connect an ethernet connected device, assuming the ethernet port that you're connecting width can go faster and your internet speed support it you can actually go faster than that and that's what the other video shows so definitely check that out if you guys get a chance so next we'll jump into range test now range will vary drastically by location so essentially the more obstructions you have typically the less range you're going to get so if you're in between floors if you have a lot of thick walls um, all of this stuff is typically going to hurt your range at 20 feet away inside my place we got a drastic reduction in speed so we went especially on the upload uh, basically went down to 2.7 and then almost 2.8 up so definitely um, it was a lot faster than I was closer but still very very fast numbers and then at 50 feet away this is when I'm outside my place still getting some incredibly fast numbers and at 100 feet away this is when I'm actually across the street and still getting some very usable numbers obviously a huge huge drop from where it used to be but still very very usable and i do cap my testing at 100 feet so in theory this can actually go faster than that i mean further than that now the app itself though is pretty limited in what you can do so it does give you like the main stuff so you can make your you know your wi-fi name you can't separate out the bands so if you want to separate 2.4 ssid and a separate 5 gigahertz and a separate 6 gigahertz you can't do that it's basically just one ssid as your main network and then you get a guest wi-fi you get the mlo option multi-link operation and then which i had enabled during this you can enable wpa3 for devices that support it it also has thread built in so it actually supports the thread zigbee and matter so if you have some smart home devices that require that you can actually use the eero as the hub and so you won't actually need an additional hub so there is a benefit of that however the downsides are that if you want parental controls it does offer parental controls but it does require a separate subscription now in the separate subscription you get some additional stuff with that however it does require that separate subscription so do keep that in mind so with all that said is it worth getting the pro 7 and who is this for well right off the bat the pro 7 they did a fantastic job and i love the fact that there's two fast 5 gigabit ports which is a massive improvement over the Eero Pro 6e. Now I did like the Pro 6e generally speaking, but one thing I didn't was not a fan of is that it had a 2.5 gigabit port and a gigabit port. And this thing, I feel like Eero really listened to the people and they gave us two 5 gigabit ports. And even the regular Eero 7 has two 2.5 gigabit ports. So I really like the fact that Eero kind of concentrated on performance and really delivered on those numbers. So it is a solid mesh system, but let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Are you guys planning on getting one? Do you have one? What's your experience with it? Thank you guys for watching. And I will be doing a comparison with the other Eros with the Pro 7. So make sure you guys subscribe. I was going to say smash that subscribe button, but I just said subscribe. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.